Hello, my name is Delaney Rhodes, and I will be presenting my thesis research on the novel Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my presentation. And although CSA Day has taken a very different form this year, I'm so grateful to still be able to share my work with you and hear about the great undergraduate work other Meredith students have completed this year. In my presentation today, we will analyze Kurt Vonnegut's 1969 novel, Slaughterhouse Five, various critical receptions of the work, and Vonnegut's official biography by Charles Shields, and so it goes, through a psychoanalytic lens to reveal the mere trauma and recovery of Kurt Vonnegut and the novel's protagonist, Billy Pilgrim. We will first take a look at how Vonnegut's own experiences from childhood through his time serving in World War II shaped him as a writer and inspired his desire to share his story of survival, loss, and endurance with others. We will then discuss the condition of society during the time of Slaughterhouse-Five's release and discuss the possibilities behind its immense success. Then we will take a look at the critical reception of the novel and how critics began to take a psychoanalytic lens to the work. We will also discuss the history of post-traumatic stress disorder and how we can trace Kurt Vonnegut's own struggles with the psychological disorder through an analysis of the character of Billy Pilgrim. We can then examine the power of writing and storytelling to overcome personal trauma through Vonnegut's action of bringing his Dresden book to life, an action so powerful that the story continues to have relevance and importance today. My claim I will hopefully be able to convince you of today is that Slaughterhouse Five serves as a portrait of how Billy Pilgrim copes with the trauma he experiences throughout his lifetime, as well as how Vonnegut comes to terms with his own personal trauma through finally sharing the haunting experiences of his past in writing. So let us now pull back the curtain and introduce the man behind the novel. Kurt Vonnegut Jr. was born in Indianapolis, Indiana in 1922 to Edith Lieber and Kurt Vonnegut Sr. as the youngest of their three children. Kurt struggled with staying motivated in school, and despite his interest in literature and writing, he dropped out of college in 1943 to enlist in the Army, claiming he was ready for an adventure worthy of Hemingway. He was eventually sent to Europe as part of the 106th Infantry Division and held as a prisoner of war in Dresden, Germany but we will discuss this further in a bit. After he was rescued and returned to the United States from the war, he married his high school sweetheart, Jane Marie Cox in 1945, and they later had three kids together, Mark, Edith, and Nanette. The two later divorced in 1971, and Vonnegut was remarried to photographer Jill Clements, and the two had a daughter, Lily. He published 14 novels throughout his literary career, including Slaughterhouse Five, which was inspired by his experiences as a prisoner of war in World War II. Vonnegut's successful writing career was concluded as he passed away in 2007 at the age of 84. Vonnegut's painful experiences early in his life would shape his philosophy towards the world as a grown man who could turn a phrase such as so it goes regarding the inevitable demise of mortality. As a child, Vonnegut felt overlooked and lonesome at home, and Ida Young, the Vonnegut family's cook and housekeeper, was Kurt's lone confidant as he grew up. Vonnegut has said that there is an almost intolerable sentimentality in everything I write. Robert Scholz, the American critic, once said that I put bitter coatings on sugar pills, and at least I am aware of my origins. In a big drip, in a big brick dream house where nobody was home for long periods of time except for me and Ida Young. Kurt also had an antagonistic relationship with his older brother Bernard, who was seen as a rare intellectual talent by his parents and teachers. Kurt notes that Bernard was a young Edison whose impressive science reputation gave him leverage in the family beyond the usual pride of place of an eldest child. Vonnegut faced the grief of losing a loved one early in his life as well. On May 14th, 1944, while Vonnegut was home from basic training after enlisting to celebrate Mother's Day with his family, his mother committed suicide at the age of 55. Following this loss, Vonnegut continued to experience extreme change in his life. Two months later, in August 1944, he was sent to Europe as an intelligence scout. 
the Battle of the Bulge was underway and Vonnegut found himself facing the beginning of Hitler's Operation Autumn Mist involving 200,000 German troops against 80,000 American troops. With his unit nearly destroyed following the Germans' attack, he wandered behind enemy lines for several days until he and approximately 60 other American soldiers were captured and sent to a prisoner of war camp near Dresden. Vonnegut was assigned by his captors to make vitamin supplements, and he was working with other prisoners in an underground meat locker when British and American warplanes began carpet bombing the city, creating a firestorm above him. Vonnegut recalled, on about February 14th, the Americans came over, followed by the RAF. Their combined labors killed 250,000 people in 24 hours and destroyed all of Dresden, possibly the world's most beautiful city, but not me. Afterward, he and his fellow prisoners were assigned to remove the dead from the ruins of the city. Vonnegut darkly joked that the scouring of the city for the remains of the dead was a terribly elaborate Easter egg hunt. On the morning after the general surrender on May 7, 1945, the Germans abandoned the prisoner camp where Vonnegut was held. Soviet army trucks carried Vonnegut and the other surviving soldiers to the American lines in Halle, Germany. In June 1945, Vonnegut finally returned to the United States. He may have been physically separated from the horrors of war, but the traumatic experiences he faced would haunt him for the remainder of his life. Almost 25 years and seven novels after the war, Vonnegut was finally ready to speak about his experience in Dresden, and the novel was published on March 31st, 1969. Slaughterhouse-Five tells the story of Billy Pilgrim, an infantry scout, as Vonnegut was, who must live through the inescapable horrors of war and face both the sudden and lasting effects. The novel begins, all this happened more or less and the public was anxious with anticipation to hear Vonnegut share the details of his war experience. Their eagerness demonstrated through the novel's immense success as it spent 16 weeks on the Times fiction list, peaking at number four, and was also on the cover of the New York Times Book Review in March 1969. Slaughterhouse-Five was Vonnegut's first best-selling novel and still remains the most widely read and critically valued. During its first year, the novel sold 800,000 copies in the U.S. alone. The public's excitement surrounding the novel's release was in large part due to the relevance of the novel's subject matter to the broader global context of the current society. It was published at a time when the war in Vietnam, the struggle for civil rights, and the threat of the expansion of communism had generated a wave of radicalism and anti-war protest in the U.S. and Western world. The initial responses to Slaughterhouse-Five included an appraisal of his Dresden book and its autobiographical elements, including Vonnegut's experience as a witness of the Dresden firebombings. It is not until later responses that critics began to discuss the postmodern elements of the novel and Vonnegut's use of the genre of science fiction to delve into his experiences in the war. Robert Scholz notes that Vonnegut speaks with the voice of the silent generation and critic Anne Rigney discusses the historical value of the work, even arguing that Dresden can be used as an abstract noun standing for a heavily burdened memory site on par with 9-11. As the mental illness of post-traumatic stress disorder was not recognized by the American Psychological Association until 1980, Slaughterhouse-Five serves not only as an unconventional and admired anti-war novel of the 1960s, but also as a coping mechanism for some of those who are not able to receive the medical treatment appropriate for their illness. The American Psychological Association defines PTSD as an anxiety disorder that can develop following a traumatic event, and common symptoms include re-experiencing the traumatic event through flashbacks or nightmares, avoidance or arousal to stimuli associated with the event, numbing of feelings after the event, and hypervigilance. World War II played a major role in advancing the knowledge of psychotraumatology in American psychiatry due to its concept of total war. With the systematic targeting of civilian populations as exemplified by the millions of deaths caused by the Holocaust, the air raids on cities to break the morale of civilian populations, and the atomic bombs dropped over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, 
This devastating outcome of complete decimation is exactly what Vonnegut witnessed in Dresden, Germany. Although to others in the novel, Billy Pilgrim is seen as fantastical and on the brink of insanity, if we were to diagnose him with what we know of psychological disorders today, he would indeed be determined to have post-traumatic stress disorder. Billy experiences various triggers throughout the novel that cause flashbacks to the war. Smells such as mustard gas and roses are one type of trigger for Billy. Another type of trigger is sound, and Billy says that when he hears sirens, he's back in World War II again. Billy also becomes, as he claims, unstuck in time, as he experiences sudden trips through time. These episodes are a consistent anxiety-inducing element of his life and create additional distress around his traumatic past memories. As a way to manage the effects of his PTSD, Billy imagines an alien planet called Tralfomador, and through his interactions with the Tralfomadorians, he is able to rationalize the magnitude of death he has witnessed. On Tralfomador, if someone is facing death, he is in a bad condition at that particular moment, but just fine in plenty of other moments. Billy finds comfort in the answers to death and time the Tralfomadorians give him, and is able to accept the painful memories of his past through the philosophy taught to him on Tralfomador. It is a type of coping mechanism for Billy that allows him to conquer his trauma. Not only does the narrative of Slaughterhouse-Five tell a Billy Pilgrim finding a way to cope with his PTSD, but Vonnegut is also able to cope with his own personal mental illness through the therapeutic process of writing down and releasing the ghosts that haunt him. Vonnegut struggled with depression following his experiences in the war and had a failed suicide attempt in 1984 on the 39th anniversary of the firebombing of Dresden. His daughter Nanette shared that she has happy memories of her father, even if she is certain that he suffered from PTSD, the symptoms of which he described so vividly through Billy Pilgrim. By creating a narrator to tell his story for him, a mirror of himself transcribed into the pages of his novel, Vonnegut allows himself a degree of distance from his, his, from his experiences and is able to uncover and deal with his trauma. Even Vonnegut himself notes the healing ability of storytelling, saying, I believe that reading and writing are the most nourishing forms of meditation anyone has so far found. This, to me, is a miracle. Whether he was aware of the significance of sharing his past trauma to the process of his healing or not, Vonnegut's undertaking of writing Slaughterhouse-Five allowed him to work through his painful experiences in the most natural way a storyteller can. Slaughterhouse-Five is Vonnegut's salvational act of self-therapy and the painful process of reliving the mass death and destruction that left both the city of Dresden and Vonnegut's faith in ruins was necessary for both Vonnegut himself and the readers looking for how to move past their own personal struggles within the pages of the novel. Vonnegut's daughter Nanette shared, he was writing to save his own life, and in doing it, I think he saved a lot of other lives. Slaughterhouse-Five offers a timeless solution that is both passive and aggressive. Accept that which we cannot change, but fight against letting the cruelty and greed that seems to be ever present and persistent within society consume you. And above all, be kind to one another. This message seems relevant in today's society as well. As we remember to look out for one another and exercise both patience and waiting for society to be able to return to normal and action, as we remember our choices affect the safety and well-being of others. Thank you again for joining me today. I'm so glad to be able to speak about the power of literature and storytelling to heal and connect each of us, despite the differences in our individual experiences an ability to truly be grateful for in times such as these. I wish you all health and happiness and thank you again. Goodbye.